Hello, David here, and the project for today is flushing the cooling system on a 2015 Honda Fit. Let's start by taking off the radiator cap. Then we're going to come in right over here and take off this coolant reservoir. There's a 10 millimeter bolt right, right there. For this rear cover, all the fasteners are Phillips except for these two rear covers, or these two rear fasteners rather, and to get it out by Prying this little thing out. I don't know why they chose to use these things. They're a pain to get out. Gotta pop these down. If you get that down like that, fastener will come up. I'm gonna do the other side. And there's no clearance to get the bottle out through the top. I'm gonna have to get it out through the bottom. Dump the coolant from the reservoir. Well, I got the bottle out since it's hard to read the bottle while it's installed in the car because you're basically looking down on it. I'm going to put a little red fingernail polish. This is the maximum mark. Here's the minimum mark. Okay, it's not pretty. At the bottom of the radiator, underneath the car, at about the central point of the radiator, you'll find the drain valve. Just remove that to drain the coolant. I guess you don't have to remove it. There's a little hole over here, which will allow it to drain. Makes it kind of less messy, doesn't it? I was looking all over the engine block to see if the engine block had a drain, and apparently it doesn't, so it all drains from the radiator. I raised the car off the jack stands, removed the jack stands, and then lowered the car so that the radiator would be at its lowest point so I could drain the most coolant. While the radiator is draining, I'm going to fill up the coolant reservoir. I'm using the 50-50 mix. Take it right up to the max line. The radiator is finished draining. I closed the petcock valve. Now I'm just going to fill the radiator with plain water. Then I'm going to cap it off. I'm going to run the engine through a heat cool cycle with the heater on so I could mix up all that old antifreeze with the water. Then I'm going to let it cool drain everything out again then I'll fill it with regular antifreeze bottle up the old antifreeze for safe disposal
So I've run the engine up the operating temperature. You can tell when the cooling fans cycle on and off. So now I'm going to shut it off, let it cool down, and then I'll drain the water from the radiator. The water should be mixed up with any old antifreeze that was sitting in the water jacket. Don't forget to update your maintenance log. I'm going to install the coolant reservoir. Don't forget this tab on the bottom. Right there. Well, I want to focus. Anyway, that tab goes into that slot. Right, that slot right there. There's a water flush I just drained out of the engine. You can see there's a lot of blue in there. Anyway, that's how much antifreeze was left in the engine block after draining the radiator. There's a petcock. Okay, the petcock is installed, the splash pan is installed, the car is off, the jack stands, and it's level. Time to top off the radiator. I'm using this Honda pre-diluted mix. It's already 50-50. And with the antifreeze that was left in the engine block after draining it, I'm going to assume it's not going to be a 50-50 mix after I flushed it with water. It's going to be something less than that. So part of this gallon of coolant is in the coolant reservoir. There must be almost a quart in there. Anywhere, probably half a quart, three quarters of a quart, I guess. So I think this radiator holds about a gallon. I have a feeling I'm going to be short. I am short on that Honda mix, and I was just reading this Prestone container, and it says it's all vehicles, makes, models, and years. So from what I can tell, it is compatible with foreign and domestic cooling systems. OAT, POAT, HOAT, and IAT. Works with all fluid colors. I'm going to add this. And I'm also going to make up for whatever water's in the system. I think I'm going to put about a cup or more of just the concentrate in without mixing that with water. And then the rest I'll put in as a 50-50 mixture. There are 16 ounces concentrated. Here's a 50-50 mix of distilled water plus the Prestone concentrate. I made up 24 ounces, 12 ounces of each. I noticed that there's no bleed valve. Some manufacturers put a bleed valve near the top of the motor. If there is one, it's hidden. So what I'm going to do is when I get the radiator full, I'm going to start the engine and let it warm up without the radiator cap on and let it burp out some air bubbles. And uh, I'm about there now. It's pretty full. Okay, just ran it up to operating temperature with the cabin heater on and I noticed a lot of air bubbles coming out. Many, many years ago a shop teacher told me never to add cold water to a hot motor because it could crack the block. I don't know if that's still true. That might have applied to cast iron blocks. This is aluminum, but I'm going to wait for it to cool down before I add any water. I can put the radiator cap on. I'm going to take it for a drive. After about three or four drive cycles where it heats up and cools down, I'm going to check it at the radiator and the coolant reservoir and add any fluid as needed, and that should be it. And it's time to wind up this video. I want to thank you guys and gals for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And ring that bell for more great informative videos from David GPO.